what is going on, everybody? Justin Proper here for a, a video. What is this? <laughs> I'm uh, I'm been enjoying my semi retirement from YouTube, uh, but there was a guy that uh, a YouTuber that I came across time and time again, either on Twitter, he was trending, or it could be on Facebook or on my recommended feed all the time, and I just had to have a chat with him. I took a shot in the dark. I said, hey, want to have a conversation? And he's like, sure. So, hey, you take your chances and it works out sometimes. Uh, my co-host tonight, this evening, this is Brian, that 70s rock fan. How you doing? Good evening, Justin. I'm doing very well, So It's great to hang out with you again. We've, we've hung out a couple of times re recently in streams and I always look forward to it and I'm sure we'll be doing more. But thank you for setting this up because, like you, I'm a huge fan of our guests. Today. Oh, yes. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the one, the only, the unassuming guy from Pennsylvania with such classic as, as Dirty Deeds Around the Christmas Tree, <laughs> Spice <laughs> Knot, uh, Buffalo MC, which is one of my favorites, but yeah. my personal favorite, you should be smoking. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Bill McClintock. <laughs> What's up, going on, everybody? Hey, hey Bill. Doing, doing all, right. all right. Doing all right. Good to see you guys. Okay, so my first question is, why is Bill McClintock? <laughs> what 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 was your inspiration to do mashups? Uh, I guess just um, I needed to do something creative with music. You know, I've always been a musician. Um, well, I guess from the time I was a kid, started you know, playing in the school band, playing drums, snare drum. Got a little older, I got into guitar music, and then from there, it just kind of, you know, discovered all kinds of different music that I liked. A lot of classic rock, 80s rock. Uh, later on, got into some, like, soul music, R&B, disco, funk, all that kind of stuff. And they were always, like, in separate worlds. And it didn't really start out, like, it was, I mean, eventually, it kind of became my thing to combine those two things. So I have, you know, rock vocals with a with a disco song or something like that or vice versa maybe soul vocals over a, a metal tune and like i said it didn't start that way it just started as you know i i saw some other people doing the same kind of thing on youtube where they were making mashups and and um you know putting videos with them and everything and i just thought that that was something i would really want to try as i said i was a guitar player i don't play at all anymore um but, you know, it just kind of, I don't know, I, got, I felt like I did all that I was going to do on guitar and I just kind of got bored with it. I wasn't really doing anything creative. So I needed something like a creative outlet. And that's just kind of I just wanted to explore that. And, you know, people pretty much right out of the gate were really just kind of into what I was doing. And then eventually they, they started to take off on YouTube. And then I just mm -hmm. developed that audience and that fueled the whole thing and i just kind of kept going i've done i don't know how many like probably over 120 130 by this point over the past seven years so yeah and i still enjoy it i still like making them oh but that's awesome and you do this mostly for fun i imagine it would be very hard to monetize this <laughs> that's what i was wondering yeah uh, what is it the is. copyright situation like bill it is yeah i mean you really can't do anything through youtube the only I, I do make just a, a very small amount from YouTube only on the videos where I didn't use um, original instrumentals. So they mm. were like karaoke tracks where and they're pretty close, but you could tell that they're not the original. And, and with that, I am able to make a little bit off of them. But I did start a Patreon a few years ago, and that's been that's worked out pretty well where it's been like a decent side hustle where mm -hmm. you know you'd pay my rent yeah <laughs> that's right yeah. That, that's, like that's for sure proud yes. patreon member here I, I fully fully support it. it's a lot it's a lot of fun you posted uh some interviews over there um yeah, it's it's pretty great. Um, Brian, yeah, so, did you want to do you want to well, jump in just, and ask? just just uh, not to get too heavy into the copyright thing but are there certain acts that you have just been unable to touch because of blocking? Yes. And there's certain ones that I, I won't even try because I already know just from what I've heard from other people, what they've tried. Um, 
The first is Prince. Mm. I do have Oof. one Prince mashup, but again, that was a karaoke. Well, you've got Rick James. What do you need Prince for? Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> Canadian funk star. All right. Okay. Um, so Prince Steph and the Eagles is another one. The Eagles are absolutely really, not. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The Eagles. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Don Henley. Blockers. Yeah. Incredibly protective over his music. I mean, to the point where their music is going to be forgotten because you can't. Yeah. Like the, I, the only it. way you can get it is just by purchasing like physical, you know, CDs or records or whatever like that. Like I, I don't even know if they're on like streaming services. I was I remember looking for the song um Dirty Laundry, I think it was oh, yeah. Yeah. Don I, I like that song. It's really cool. I wasn't trying to use it in a mashup or anything. I just I, I was gonna to ask to it. And I couldn't <laughs> find like it wasn't on Apple Music, I couldn't get it on YouTube. Like what the heck is going on? Like why? Why would you I don't want anyone to see it. your music like that? I mean, there's so, like younger people who have never heard that stuff who might be really into it, but if they if they can't access it, if it's not on you know streaming somewhere digital, they're never going to hear it. And yeah, as time are, goes on, it's going to gonna go. It's going to be like his mm. stuff is going to be forgotten. Yeah, and like that, I mean, grand, grandpa. Thing, and a lot of people who say the same same thing. Yeah, uh, it's a celebration the, of the what music. What are these vinyls? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what, what is this round thing? <laughs> right? Really, really yeah, you're it's celebrating. Like it's, yeah. it's like was our parents' favorite band. Now it's our grandparents' favorite band. And you for know, sure, I don't know anyone who really is a big Eagles fan. You know, who's you know, younger than me, which is I'm shocked by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I, I think they're one of the greatest bands. Their stuff is amazing. I'm a big but, Bernie Leiden fan. I like the original Eagles, the original four piece lineup, Bernie Leiden. Uh, oh, see, I'm not even familiar with that. Oh, yeah, the first four albums. Yeah, the Bernie Leiden era. He, uh, he's, he was my favorite. So. Uh, but yeah, they're going to be forgotten. I think Rick Beato has talked about this a lot. Like, yeah. th there's a point where you're stifling your audience. I mean, what you do celebrates these bands and these this music. In my I opinion. think of it that way too. Because I, I, and like I said, the younger people, especially, they've, never heard it before and you know maybe they're hardcore metal fans but i could throw they in like some that. other stuff that they, they've never heard like on the other side the r&b yeah. funk disco it's an interesting mix stuff. bill i mean you're obviously a metal fan like many of us are but you've always you, you throw together like r&b and metal or soul and disco and metal. it just seems to fit how does it fit so well you know it really is just it's all rooted in music theory so first and foremost same key so the the two songs are going to share the same at least similar chord progressions same notes you know the, all of those kinds of things um same tempo even if it's off mm -hmm. by a little bit you can adjust that um and it, the big thing though that people don't realize and it, what makes it really hard to find a good match is vocal phrase lengths so, you know, you have your vocal line, it goes for, you know, a measure or however many beats, whatever it is. And then you have some something that happens in the instrumental that it's, you know, right at the end of the vocal phrase. So it's not stepping on the vocal phrase. They're, they're not happening at the exact same time, mm -hmm. but there's a space for it. End of the vocal phrase, there's this little fill that happens in the music, you know, and, and that's what makes it. That's what gives it a flow. That's what makes it sound like it belongs together and that it could be a real song. Well, some of yeah, those like, vocals. What's kind of funny about that is I can't listen to these uh, OG songs anymore because these new <laughs> remixes are just so good. And I, I, mean, I, I, uh, I think I've mentioned this to you. I did do a couple of mashups. Uh, the jump, uh, it was, uh, it was uh, like Van Halen's Jump and Attack Attacks um, <laughs> from Ocahontas. Uh, and I understand like everything, but I was using audacity because it was free and it was awful and trying to get it down to like the microsecond with the beats and having it all line up is so infuriating. Oh yeah. Uh, it's yeah. the lineup of the vocal that you mentioned. And like Justin's talking about too, that the vocal seems to fit so well. Like you should be smoking. You mentioned. Yeah. Which is, I can't hear, listen to, to you, uh, to smoke on the water without hearing the Bee Gees now. <laughs> It's, yeah, it, it nice. just seems the the actual length of each vocal line seems to fit perfectly. Yeah, yeah we'll, uh, we'll, if you don't mind, I'll, I'd like to show an example of that. Smoke on the water. Smoke on the water. 
right just now. Like, get... go... <laughs> right. Like, yeah, like yeah. like I can't listen to Smoke of the Water anymore. <laughs> 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 It's crazy. Uh, yeah. So um, my uh, question is because uh, no diss on Audacity. It was great for what it was, it, but it's not the best for audio editing. Um, what is your preferred platform nowadays? That was it Logic or um, Pro Tools? It is. It's Logic. Okay. And it's funny you say Audacity because, I mean, like anything, when you first try something, you have no idea what you're doing, really. You know, like I understood how I, I could maybe – make the whole process work and how the music would work and everything. But as far as actually doing it, I didn't really, I mean, I didn't know what I was doing. So I was the, the first few that I did, I was using GarageBand just because I had it already on my Mac, <laughs> but I was trying to do certain things in audacity and then like export them and then import them into GarageBand. And it was like, a mess. <laughs> you can't right. isolate the vocal as well. No, you need to isolate oh, that's a whole other thing because sometimes you can't find like an original isolated vocals or like True. because I tried that with a a, a different track, um, and uh, it just sounded like a hot mess with the two vocals going on at the same time. It's like they were fighting for attention. True. Yeah, and that you do run into that a lot. Um, most of the the isolated vocals and instrumental stuff that i find is just from youtube mm -hmm. so i'll just go on and, and just download it as a like a high quality mp3 and um you know just use those to mix but if i can't find something like probably the most recent one that i did where i didn't have an isolated vocal was the aretha franklin and black sabbath oh I love that. so because <laughs> i mean aretha franklin you really can't find any stems from mm. of, of her stuff um, but I, I was able to to isolate it pretty well. And I can't remember if I did this one. And I, I had a friend actually who helped me with it um, using software, um, Ultimate Vocal Remover, it's called. Oh, okay. And I since learned how to how to use it myself. Um, but he he helped me out a, a few times. His name's John Metcalf. And I'm, I, uh, he has a YouTube channel where he just has nothing but stems just a whole bunch of isolated stuff or instrumentals a huge database and and you know so i was using his stuff all the time and i so he's like one of the only people that i support on patreon because i right. use his stuff so much but um yeah. and then he was able to isolate her vocal and to where i mean it sounded really high quality and you know putting it in with, with black sabbath and now and the, the sabbath instrumental i just had to kind of find places within the the music where it was just mm -hmm. the riff without him singing because i didn't i didn't have a, an instrumental of that either but a lot of times with sabbath you can that they're the songs are set up that way so mm -hmm. you'll have the riff by itself without the vocals and then you can just take that and then just repeat mm -hmm. it loop it over and over again however many times you need it um but i i think the quality of the the, the aretha franklin and sabbath sounded pretty decent you know just it sounded good man yeah you know, Acapella. It, it, in terms of of your process do you start with the audio and then the video mix comes later yes or, so i'll start with the audio yeah always the audio first so the audio is 100 percent done and then i i'll import that into um imovie and i still use imovie i never <laughs> i do too I never, no shame in that <laughs> yeah i never upgraded from it and i'm like it's one of those things i'm thinking like oh i should do that someday i should do it. and i just i never do um, I mean, but for me, it's it's a, I'm all about the audio and the music. And I, I mean, that's where it just has yeah. to be as perfect as I can possibly get it. Sometimes those videos do seem to fit together extremely well as well. I know you're obviously putting a lot of effort into that, but it yeah, seems like right sometimes too. they fit perfectly, too. And you kind of have to get lucky with that, because mm. I I mean, when I'm when I'm doing the audio, I never really have any kind of clear idea of what the video is going to look like. I get the audio done completely first and then I'll search and try to find video clips that I can use. Right. And then sometimes you get lucky and the two clips that you have will have really similar coloring, yeah. you know? So it's like, it's almost hard to tell where one starts and the other one be or ends and the other one begins because they look so so like the um you said the spice knot one the um that one yeah it's one yeah, of your most successful spice girls ones. and slipknot those two videos <laughs> yeah. just the way that they were shot looks so similar 
mm-hmm. and they mix together really well. And that was just luck. I mean, that's just. I like the James yeah, Hetfield in the out. news one. That's one of my favorites. And I think that video looks great because you keep cutting to, to Huey Lewis, even though he's not singing. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's just he's kind of standing, dancing around. <laughs> well, what else can he do? <laughs> you know, <Right. laughs> you know? Sometimes, uh, sometimes you run into those issues like, uh, for example, the mashup I was talking about, uh, there were two vocalists, but I found it impossible to use the other the other vocalist because it just doesn't work. So sometimes you have to like omit like certain parts of a song that, oh, you really want to get in there, but it just doesn't work. What's been an That's example true. that uh, that you could think of where something c- didn't quite work hmm. in the song? I think it happens all the time. I mean, pretty much every single one there's you just you have to work with what you have and ideally it's nice to be able to take the vocal and leave it completely intact so you have the verse pre-chorus chorus chorus, everything in order and hopefully the music's going to work out with that and sometimes it does sometimes the the two songs are either similar enough harmonically melodically or they're just so simple that there's not a lot of chord changes going on and it's just gonna work anyway um so, so I don't if know you if let... I can think of a good example where i just had to yeah uh, you know d- do just a verse and you know i can't really do the chorus or or whatever but sometimes you, you know and and what i've mentioned in other interviews before the james hetfield in the news I love that, yeah. one. that one was tricky because the um the metallica song had a pre-chorus mm. and it was in a different key so it's like you know the the verse is in e minor and then it goes up a whole step to f sharp minor for the pre-chorus and there's nothing in the huey lewis song that does that so i was like well what do i you have to figure out what to do so i just basically <clears throat> went through the um huey lewis song and found just one spot where there was that f sharp minor chord and I just looped it. And then I put like a, the trumpet fills over top of that, mm. like between the vocal <laughs> phrases. And, and it just sounded like, okay, like that sounds like legit. Like that works. It sounds like a real song. And and then it just worked out. And, you know. Did you also have to take agree. apart all the specific uh, instruments uh, from that? Like the bass line, the, uh, the horns, as you said, like the drums, you shift that around. Like, or does that get a little too complicated? For that one... Not as much. Uh, I didn't have individual tracks for that, individual stems for like all the instrument parts. So it was just, and actually that was another one where I had to remove the vocals because there was no instrumental of that, of um, Hip to Be Square. Mm. So I gotta I had learn to, how to do that. <laughs> and that one, that was a couple of years ago. So I, I think I used RX7 at the time, which is like, it's a plugin from Isotope. Mm. which is like a um try like an audio repair thing i think is how they describe it but you can do music rebalance where you can it's like drums bass guitar vocals and you can like set the levels of each instrument and i mean theoretically that's how it's supposed to work and sometimes it works better than others um Mm. so but for the huey lewis there wasn't really much i could do i could you know like i said i had to rearrange the form a bit um but sometimes i I, and i the ones where i'm going to have the most freedom are the ones where i could find all those individual tracks and i can put in a drum fill here where it didn't exist in the original song or you know take instruments out if i don't want them if i want just bass or just bass and drums for a certain part i can do that whereas you i couldn't do that if i had everything on one track So it all, it depends on what I have. And I just, I just have to get creative and whatever I'm I'm able to use, whatever I can with it. I do enjoy the fact that towards the end of many of the tracks, you actually slip solos in from yet another song and then yet another solo. (laughs) I love doing that. that. I love that. Yeah. 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 Like the Buffalo MC video, you, you have, you threw in uh, Def Leppard slash, and then of course you threw in Van Halen again. (laughs) Every time he and feature a lot, yes, we all I feel love like Van I've Halen. done probably fifteen of it, maybe maybe more. Yeah, and, with Van Halen. And that, yeah, Van and that, that's another thing is it's the availability, and if you can find them, and I mean, it, almost every Van Halen track, 
you can find an, an isolated guitar. Okay, I didn't know. So that. I mean, it's it. I mean, it works out well because he is my favorite. If I can only pick one guitarist of any genre to be my favorite, it would definitely be Eddie Van Halen. Well, I chose well it works out well that I could, I could find all those and, and, and be able to use them. Well, your latest one was Van Miracles, of course. So you've got Van Halen again. Yes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and that one was tricky because I mean, it was the, the Miracles music and the uh, Van Halen vocal. And I, ha I had to have Eddie's guitar in there somewhere i couldn't not do that but the original solo from unchained is played over like a, a four chord and a five chord and the the phrases are like weird lengths I, I forget exactly what it is so i couldn't use it so i'm like what do i do mm -hmm. what do I, you know I, I have to find something else of his that will work so it was um feel your love tonight that mm -hmm. one off of their first album i was able to find that track and it was in E flat, so I had to move it down to D and yeah. So tempo, you do do adjust the keys similar. sometime, yeah. You adjust the keys. And the yeah, keys. pretty much any time that I'm doing, like somewhere I have to do that. I have to adjust the keys or adjust a note here, here or there, just to make it all fit. I think one of my favorite titles of yours was a Van Halen. It's Van Whalen, which I also <laughs> think is the greatest title. <laughs> See it the wrong way. In your... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, uh, Hank Williams and Van Halen. So yeah. I'm trying to combine those two names. It's so diverse. I mean, you managed to fit like Leo Sayer with Metallica and things like that. I just love that, that it takes two things you would, two people you would never expect to be connected and you intimately put them together. Yeah. Um, that, that was kind of an, an interesting one because I was, um, I was uh, contacted by a, a music publishing company. And they were asking if I could do something with that Leo Sayer song. Mm. And I, I never would have thought to use that song ever. That's, but I mean, it's not, I, the song's fine. Like I like it and everything, mm -hmm. but I don't think mm -hmm. I ever would have thought to use it. And so I'm going through like, what can I put with this song? It's going to work and it's going to be funny at the same time. And that I just came up with the Metallica <laughs> one. And it, it was cool because I, it, was putting it the metallica song which is in a minor key and has that like kind of like heavy angry sound to it into the relative major which just happened to be the right key for the the leo sayer so it all of a sudden it just was very happy sounding but it was still james hetfield yelling <laughs> all of a sudden it became much happier so mm. that, that was fun now, uh, to follow that up, um, is any is there any artist aside from uh, the couple that you mentioned that won't ever allow <laughs> their their music to be explored by anybody because uh, they just take them down? Is there any band that is safe from the McClintock breath? <laughs> <laughs> safe from them? How do you mean? No one uh, is safe. Like uh, ones ones that you, you know probably you just uh, won't touch. Yeah, just like eh, too probably hard. Not going to do that or something like that. Um, I don't think so. The only things that I would really avoid would just be anything that it's, it's too musically complex to really do anything with because the okay. chord progressions are, are just unique and Those are a little pro be thing. compatible. I, I have a friend. Um, she, she keeps asking me to do something with ABBA and I never oh, have I wondered why you'd never done and that. I mean, I, I would write like for it. Yeah. But most of their songs are just, you know, they're just changing a lot through, or like the verse and the chorus will be in a different key, um, or there'll be something. I don't know. Just I guess the best way to put it is just to, just too musically complex to well, really do anything, awesome. and that that would end up being one of those situations where I could use some of it, whether it's the vocal or the you have to rearrange the instrumental. And I, I don't want to do that too much because then it destroys the integrity of the original song. Mm. And, right. So Dream Theater is off the table. Dream Theater would be off the you, table. You yeah. You did do the Alan Parsons project, though. That's pretty proggy. That, yeah, it is. <laughs> but really, that's. That was a funky pretty, song. Pretty much just one. like a one, four, and five. I remember yeah. that, that was C minor and then the Dio song. And one I, of the I, more funky ones. C minor. It, so it was, you know not too complicated I and mean, more than anything it's the, the harmonic complexity so the chord progressions where you just nothing else is going to fit with it unless you start tweaking it and again that's going to make it not sound like the original song 
So you were contacted by Leo Sayers people or somebody connected to me. What, are, what other feedback have you had from artists? You know what? I actually, the one that I just did most recently, I actually talked to Billy Griffin on the phone. Well, he was the, the singer who replaced Smokey Robinson back in the early 70s. Mm. And, you know, it was interesting because I was like, because he, he found my, um, he found the mashup that I did and just he commented on it on my McClintock mashups Facebook page. And, uh, you know, he said, you know, thank you for the mashup and everything. And he said, um, and I'd just like to correct you on something. He said that, you know, <laughs> this song was um, never, it, it had nothing to do with Smokey Robinson. He said, mm -hmm. I was the one who wrote it and everything like that. And I thought, well, I'm, I don't understand why he's saying that because I definitely did not credit Smokey Robinson on, on the video that I made. No. You know, I said, I just credited the song as the miracles because that's what it is. You know, it was just the miracles. And I made sure that the thumbnail that I put on there the picture of the miracles yeah, with, looking at with it, yeah. Billy Griffin and it, not Smokey Robinson. Like I was careful. I'm always careful with that stuff. So I'm like, well, what is he talking about? And like, he's, he asked if I would call him and like, I, you know, that we messaged back and forth. He gave me his number. I'm thinking, well, what's, you know, is he pissed? Is he like, <laughs> like what's going on? But <laughs> right. I, he was, he was the coolest guy. He was so nice. And, um, you know, he, again, he said like, thanks for doing this. He's like, it's really cool. And we talked music a, a little bit, like some of the stuff mm. that, that he did with the miracles back in the seventies and talked about the stuff that I do. And, uh, I guess what happened was one of his friends or somebody had told him that, you know, somebody used your song love machine and credited it wrong or something. And I told him, and I said, well, no, I didn't. I said, <laughs> I was, you know, I, I, I put it on the right way. And I said, would you want me to add your name to it? I should, I, you know, I, I told him I could write you know, the miracles featuring Billy Griffin. And he was like, Oh yeah, would you do that? You know, it'd be really cool if you would do that. And I was like, absolutely. You know, and then we talked for a while we talked for maybe 30 minutes. Or so. And he was, yeah, I mean, he's appreciative of it. Appreciative of the fact that I was putting the, that old music out for people to hear because I mean, that's, it's a song. It was a great song. It was their, like uh, of all the miracles songs that one was the um i think the highest charting or the, the well i don't remember that one well because i was i was like i don't know about 12 or something when that came out it was a big hit i remember that song very well yeah rather than the Smokey robinson stuff yeah right yeah and i like From, that stuff too and i actually i listened to that that whole album it's a good album and they, they put out a lot of good stuff around that time. So, yeah. but it, yeah, it was nice just talking to him and cause that never happens. I mean, nobody ever really reaches out and wants to. I'm to surprised talk. cause there's been millions of views on some of these. I would have thought the occasional artist would be like, eh, yeah, you, you know, know what they, a lot of, a lot of them do see them and sometimes they'll share them on their own social media, hmm. which like is Rob, cool. Uh, was it Rob Zombie? That was one of them. I don't know if he did. Uh, definitely Zach Wild did. Oh, when I did, um, mm. it was a, a Black Label Society song with a Temptation song, and and he loved mm. that. He never, he didn't reach out to me, but I know he put that on all his social media mm. and was like a huge fan of it. So, and and that's cool because I've, I mean, I'm a big fan of, of him and his guitar playing and everything mm -hmm. he did with Ozzy. Oh, so that, oh, yeah. Cool to get that his, uh, his nephew was my uh, was my roommate in college. <laughs> Are you serious? So, yes, coincidentally. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah, he told me a few stories that I probably uh, won't won't share on air, but <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell me later. Probably, yeah, that it probably should. It it shocked me. I didn't even ask him about it. Like his dad brought it up. I was like, that is cool. I really hope I don't yeah. freak him out and fangirl. <laughs> you oh know, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Just, just a little bit, you know. And I've seen him live with a few uh, different bands like Black Label Society, uh, Zach Sabbath, which yeah. is really which is really fun. Um, so I'm curious, uh, what do you have? Um, what are some artists that you haven't made mashups of, and you could do that? Like it's plausible, uh, but would like to do someday? Like an artist you haven't, you know, gotten to yet that would really excite you. Um, first one that came to mind when you said that is uh, Christopher Cross. <laughs> oh wow! Chris song, Cross? What, what's that? Chris Christopher Cross? Cross. Like the... Christopher Cross? Christopher oh, Cross. He does sailing, uh, sailing, ride like yeah. That's a, or uh, 
<laughs> ride like the wind. I love ride, that. ride with the wind. I mean, like the wind. Yeah, I I really like that one. I'd love I I would love to use that with? instrumental. Um, and it's it's not overly complicated. And I I know that there is an instrumental that exists on YouTube. And I I a few years ago I remember trying some combinations with that and didn't find anything at the time. <clears throat> but we'll probably revisit that. And now that I've said it. I might have to do that soon and go back and, right. and see if I can find something. And that, it, I mean, that's kind of how the whole, that whole thing goes is I'll have a song that I want to use and I'll try some combination and maybe I find something at that time yes. and maybe not, maybe I'll put it away and eventually it'll come back. I remember at love machine. I was originally going to do that with the, the James Hetfield vocal um, for enter Sandman. I was going to oh. try that. And it like part of it kind of worked, but then the rest of it, I, it, it wasn't happening. So that one went with Huey Lewis. Mm -hmm. And then the, I, yeah, like I'm glad you did it that way. Cause that is one of my personal <laughs> favorites. <laughs> I that play these, really I play up. these, I'll sit and play these all night. I'll go around like 10 of them and play them again and again. Like it's funny so. because, and I, I really like that one too, but I, I never have any idea how they're going to do whenever I put them on YouTube. Cause I don't play them for anyone beforehand. It's just, I'm the only one who hears them until they're on there so I your personal favorite so yeah. I mean, if you were to pick one or two that you really are particularly fond of would you be able to do that i mean they're all your children I there's know. a few and uh, some of them might surprise you um the one that i mentioned the prince one with slayer mm. i really like that one um just some of the stuff i did a, a couple guest guitar solos and I think the end is one of my favorite and it's not so much an audio thing. It's more of a video thing, but, um, the end of, um, uh, what's the song now? I'm trying to think of what it is. I'm looking it up on my phone. Oh, okay. The Prince song. Um, let's get crazy. Let's go crazy. Let's go, let's yeah, go yeah, crazy. Let's go crazy. Yeah. The end of that song originally had Prince, of course, doing his guitar solo at the end. Mm -hmm. Right. But wow. instead I put Carrie King on there doing it. <laughs> <laughs> guitar solo from whatever slave maybe south mm. of heaven i can't remember what what slave that, song it that was, was right, yeah and I'm it surprised was surprised you didn't I mean, go with van halen again <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but the thing I, I just found it funny because like clearly prince's solo was better originally in that in that setting but i put carrie king in there and he's shredding and and you know doing his thing and then the, the camera just cuts to uh tom Araya. And he's just got this look on his face like he's just kind of watching and you know like trying try not to laugh because it sounds bad right. <laughs> and I, I don't know i just i found that funny and sometimes i'll you know these videos that i do a long time ago and i, and I don't watch them for a while and then i'll pull them out and then i'll just i'll start laughing and so like I, I forgot that i did this or whatever and i'll, I'll start laughing at them Oh, but like the Los Disturbados, the Macarena. Oh, I love I, that. I, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. God, I played great. that on, uh, we were, that 70s rock fan, and I, uh, we were with a bunch of other guys, we were doing uh, like a stream of what makes a song heavy, and we were all sharing yeah. songs, and my first choice, because they mentioned mashups, I'm like, we're playing Los Disturbados, and the chat was like, <laughs> make it stop! <laughs> it was great, though. I love that, poor Justin. I'm so glad you mentioned it. Yeah. It is. I, and you know what's funny? I shared, like, these mashups with people, like, not just on YouTube, but, like, friend, co-workers, um, old friends, like, even, like, my parents, and they're like, this is good. This works. What oh. is this? <laughs> it's, and, and, they're, and a lot of them are such bangers. I'm like, how 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 does he come up with these combinations? I know that's what always like, fascinates me. Do like, you do you like uh, have like an etch a sketch or like you like throw a dart at the wall or something? Just kind of pick two names well, out of a hat. <laughs> there's there's different ways that they come together. Usually, yeah. it's I mean, again, it's working with whatever I'm able to find. Yeah. So most times it's it's a vocal that I find. I have an isolated vocal, mm. and um, you know, I. It, figure out what key is it in what is the tempo and sometimes i'll already have just some songs in my head that i've been wanting to use that i know they're in a certain key and i'll kind of go through those first and think if they're going to work together 
And <clears throat> sometimes it's just on Apple Music, pick a certain radio station and then just go through just over and mm -hmm. over, like through, a, you know, hundreds of songs, how, however many. And my first the first thing that I would typically do, though, is to go onto a, a database that I have found online. It's a karaoke website, but they have a really good search feature on it where you can search by key beats per minute, genre, decade, um, mm -hmm. anything where you like, okay, I need it in this certain key and in, in, in this tempo. And then it'll, it'll show you all the songs that they have in their database. And they have something like 60,000 songs maybe. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that'll come up. And then I'll take that. And I mean, theoretically, those songs are going to work together, but it might not necessarily sound great. You know, certain it, you, you just have to find that right combination. And that's where you, it's just putting in the time. And I'll take that vocal and I'll have the inst an instrumental that I want to try to use. And I'll just play the vocal over top of it just to, to get some kind of an idea. Like, is this something that could work? And like mm -hmm. if, the, if, you know, initially it sounds like it's really cool, then it's a matter of, well, I hope that I could develop an entire song with this because, you know, I don't know if the pre-chorus will work or the chorus will, but usually I'm able to, to figure something out to, to piece something together in a way that I can develop it mm -hmm. and make a whole song. I mean, roughly how long does it take you, like a month to do one? or I, I pretty much do one per month. And mm. it's it's really hard to, to track hours mm. and like oh, really how much time I'm doing. Track. Yeah, it's <laughs> I mean, it's I, I throw out a ballpark of like maybe around 20 hours to put in mm. total. And and it's, you know, whenever I can find a lot of times I do it, I work on them when I when I get to work in the morning. I'm a, a music teacher and I always get to work <laughs> really yeah, and, uh, early. Like we meant we meant to ask you who are your favorite favorite pupils, Bill. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. You're right, but like uh, it's yeah. again a matter of finding time to work on it. It's usually just it's early. I do my best work like first thing in the morning. I was never a morning person growing up, but mm. now I am. Now that I'm in my 40s, I just I'm I'm now a morning person. It's weird. I don't know why, but it's, and that's you know like. I just do my best work at that time. And mm. I mean, I'm awake. I'm, I'm not like exhausted after a day of teaching kids. Cause I mean, I come home, I don't want to do anything. I just no, want to uh, oh, right. yeah. chill. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Plus you have like a couple of like free periods before the students come in. Like mm -hmm. this is like, what was it like primary elementary school? Like, or like, yeah. yeah. So I, I have kindergarten through sixth grade. Ooh, that's but, a very wide range. I hope you're introducing them to metal, though. You know what? They get a little taste of of metal, for sure. Do they do they, <laughs> do they know about your mashups? Do you are you are your students aware of them? Uh, yes, I mean, I mention it, but it's like the 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 whole art form is completely lost on them because they don't know the song. Just another song to them, yeah. Yeah, other song. than like you know stuff that I will sometimes play for them during class it's not stuff that they would typically listen to. Mm. So they don't, they don't really get it, but they'll, I mean, they'll ask two questions is that the, the questions I get is like, okay, so YouTube pays you a lot of money for your YouTube channel, right? Cause you have four <laughs> subscribers. They okay. know nothing. They know That's nothing. That's number one. And number two is, oh, so you got a plaque from YouTube because you have over a hundred thousand subscribers. No, I didn't get any from them either. You never got one? No, uh -uh. Oh. they don't get, unless, your content has to be 100% original, no copyrighted oh, stuff at all. And they, no, they won't even give me a plaque. Never? Nope. Nothing. Oh, screwed so then. Stupid. We're all screwed. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I'll ever get to 400,000 subscribers, but yeah. Oh, congratulations. You just passed uh, that yeah, 401k. 401k mark. Oh, yeah. 401k. 401k, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. You've got your yes. 401k. That's exactly where oh, I am now. Don't That's remind right. me. Now I have to. That's a shame about the plaque, though. We should start a campaign for you. Get you it's, I mean, it's not a. It would be nice to have one, you know? It just. It would, it well, would when you think cool. of what you're doing for them with the millions of views, I mean, they're yeah. getting something out of it. Yeah. I should, like a little something, you know? And it's, it's they better. treat me as though I'm just taking original music 
in its original form and just posting it. Yeah, it's not. And that's it. No. No, that but that's that's not what you do. You actually like create an art transform it. I'm surprised that you know they don't. I'm actually I'm genuinely surprised that people like I guess in the higher ups of YouTube um uh, bless them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, bl they, uh, bless them. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> hey. Right. No, oh, I'm just scratching. I'm scratching. Edit this out. <laughs> 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 oh man. Well, um, we went a little bit past the the thirty minute mark, um, but that's all right. We've been having a good time. Um, that seventies rock fan, do you have any final uh, questions you'd like to ask? Well, I mean, Bill, it's been an absolute honor and pleasure because, as I said, I'm a huge fan. I love your stuff, and I'm always Thank playing you. it. Uh, I particularly love the Judas Priest stuff because I'm a big Priest fan. So, Judette, James right. Brown, and Judas Priest. That that. Uh, Electric Sex Machine is my all-time favorite. Oh, nice. I love that one. I love that one to death. If I could make a request, if there's anything you can do with Cheap Trick, that's one of my favorite bands of all time. Give it a th give it a thought for me. Yeah, cool. But, well, real quick, it's such he, a pleasure, mate. Since since you you mentioned um Judas Priest, I don't know if you remember. This is one that was taken down. I I got a copyright strike from this one. It was oh, um yeah. Billy Jean by Michael Jackson. It was that music yeah. with uh, You Got Another Thing, thing Coming, that yeah. vocal. And oh, that was, that was so down. good. That was a good one. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm redoing it, and that's going to oh. be the next video to go up. I, If I remember oh. correctly, the reason it was taken down was because I used like a lot of the music video from Billy Jean, yeah. and I think that was the reason why it was taken down. So I'm redoing it, and I am adding a guest guitar solo into it that was not there the first time I did it. So I'm going to add that guest guitar solo, redo the video, and put that on my channel. And you did use Billy Jean with Billy Cocaine. I did do that one. Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that yeah, a bit less of the video, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't know why. Because I was wondering, too, because I remember thinking, well, if I got a copyright strike and it was taken down for using that video, why wasn't the other one that I also used that video in? Like, why is that okay? Yeah. It, yeah, it, they it, like it, to be selective. It's really random, like on random, YouTube, because yeah. I've seen whole movies on here, uh, an oh, entire yeah. movie, and it's right. fine. Yet I like play a clip of it when I'm like oh, I'm doing a watch along party, and I get a strike. What the yeah. hell? Why? I don't understand that. You, it doesn't movie. make sense. Yeah, movies, mm -hmm. TV shows, and you know you can find all that stuff on YouTube, and it's just there, and it's okay. <laughs> But uh, thank, you thank you for everything you, you do, you Bill. Plaque. Absolutely. <laughs> let's uh, yes, let's let's uh let's uh have a campaign to get Bill McClintock a plaque. Finally, a plaque. He deserves one. Awesome, He's great. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much for your time. And uh, cool. I know you've you know had a great day at school. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and so yeah. Uh, so thank you so much for your time. Uh, this was a fantastic conversation, and. Uh, We'll uh we'll peace out guys. Um I'm gonna end uh with a funny little clip here, just for fun. <laughs> nice. All right, guys, peace Love out. It. Well, thanks to the lame ass security, I'm going home.